Goro Watanabe. But it's one
have seen it automated uh, in the future. Talking about the generations. Tech shop. Uh, we are working with Tech shop. Tech shop is a new type of business that provides ordinary people the access to uh, tools from sewing machines to expensive labor cutters. And Tech shop and Fruits are working to fill the tra trail with the interest in 3D interesting tools such as 3D printers and laser cutters. And we're building a mentor and middle school in California. This is one of our contributions to society. And I've talked about small innovations. I want to talk about heavy innovation. We call it heavy synchrony. Synchrony is a uh, means of new main line in Japanese, often translated as uh, with train. But they are different, I will tell you why. By the way, how many of you have the chance to visit Japan? Not many. Did you take Shinkansen? Uh, don't worry if you know more about Shinkansen. I have a very short, offshore introduction video. I'm on my way to Tokyo, but I just got off at Shinkanamaki Station. Why? Whoa! So fast! Here you can see the Shinkansen Pass at a speed of 320 kilometers per hour. Inside the train. In a grand class luxury passenger cabin, services begin soon after departure. At the rail network passengers, to change trains. The automated 5 and A6 series cars. I think we saw a good example of Japan's hospitality oriented culture. I think we also became more appreciative of Japan's natural beauty. This was Geraldine Tobisher reporting for the Japan California High Speed Rail Consortium. So the point is, you the past, convenient, comfortable, high tech, more than that, and uh, the first class looks gorgeous. You should try it. Uh, I don't know, I've never traveled first class. As you know, the Shinkansen started its operation in 1964, more than a half century ago. Uh, and it was 17 years before uh, the second, uh, well, the second big train, the TGV started in operation. So, you know, the success of Shinkansen inspired France, China, and many other countries. So, you can say that Shinkansen is an innovation that started in Japan and changed the world completely. You know, their top priority has been unchanged for over half a century. What do you think it is? It's safety. You know, 200 miles an hour without safety is uh, reckless. A cool design without safety is just uh, stupid. So I think the Japanese are addicted to safety. There are many reasons, but one of the reasons I believe is the geography. She said Japan has beautiful nature. That also means Japan has every type of natural disaster. So it would seem to be a very bad idea to have a uh, high speed rail in this country to this very dangerous and very expensive, but they did anyway, long before any other countries did. And they did it well. 11 billion passengers have used it in 50 years. Nobody has been killed. No fatal accidents. Do you think it's a pure luck or miracle? It's neither. It's a subset of by technologies and hardware. What kind of technology is hardware? I have another talk show video here. Safety is the top priority of our business management. The Shinkansen has enjoyed an accident-free record since the start of its operation. The inspection of tracks and electrical equipment is conducted with the aid of East Eye, our total inspection train. East Eye checks the condition of tracks and electrical equipment while it's running at high speed. Components are removed from the train at optimal intervals Axles, the most important components in the operation of trains, are subjected to ultrasonic tests. The signaling system, a key element of railway safety, uses a digital ATC system. It slows down or stops automatically as required. Its emergency brakes are applied to stop the train or reduce its speed before the arrival of a much stronger secondary wave. 27 Tohoku Shinkansen trains were in operation. All of them stopped safely. There were no derailments and no casualties.
disaster measures include the Shinkansen Disaster Prevention Information System, which monitors changes in the weather throughout the entire Shinkansen network. Education and training are an important prerequisite for training in real life conditions with the aid of a simulator. Oh, sorry for past wasting video. I just wanted to let you know that they are doing everything they can for your safety. And uh, don't you think it's impressive that there were no derailments during one of the largest earthquakes in human history? But what if the epicenter was right under the speeding train? What do you think would happen? It would be likely to derail. Uh, it happened only once in the history of Shinkansen, but it happened and it is thought that the train was running at 124 miles an hour. Would you bet your life if your train derailed at 124? I wouldn't normally, but I would if we tour Shinkansen. Hundreds of passengers didn't receive a scratch. Do you think it's a luck or miracle? It's neither. The compartment of the Shinkansen train is designed to uh, enter the worst case scenario like this. You know, the derailment may happen only once a half century, but uh, they are ready for it. So that's why the word Shinkansen is synonym of safety in Japan. It's not just a high speed train. Uh, they are so addicted to safety, they even built a museum dedicated to accidents. You know, Japan's railways are not so safe as they are today. Uh, they experience a lot of accidents along the way. But they are learning from past accidents, even now. I want to say thank you to JRE for sharing this interesting data with us. You know, they're spending $4 billion a year. And half of it goes to safety features. So they are officially addicted to safety. You, you know what? People say that everything Japanese is good, cool, safe, but expensive. But now you know the reason why. The safety, quality are not free. It takes a great amount of time and experience and investment. So you, you know, you can return your broken all 2 d and get a new one, but you can't get your life back once it's lost. So it's good to have some people addicted to your safety, Japanese style. Uh, decades ago, when I was a student at the University of Tokyo, I was attending the classes taught by Professor Inose. He was a great scholar, uh, also teaching at the University of Pennsylvania, University of Michigan, more universities. He was also a member of the first generation Shinkansen project, uh, and he asked us a question in the class. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think is Shinkansen? We thought, what a high speed train. He continued, it's not a train. I wondered, what the heck is it if it's not a train? What do you think it is? He said, it's a system. So that was fresh for some. It was when the, the word system wasn't as popular as it is today. Today we call everything system or cloud. But certainly not 60 years ago when they were designing the same country, but they knew that it was system. Actually, they were running in 16 cars, 1,000 some trains, uh, every 15 minutes at 130 miles an hour on the same track. The rest of the world followed them to Japanese world uh, after their mind. Because this was more than half a century ago when they didn't even, have, even, didn't even have PCs. Well, actually, they knew that it was a system. They were not out of their mind. Uh, they had computers, they had automatic train control, they had uh, uh, mission control like this. So they know everything about every train all over the nation. So, location, speed how many seconds, not the minutes ahead, but behind the schedule. And uh, they are touched with every country. So once something goes wrong, they can fix it quick. They have plan B, C, D, E, F, G. And the Fujitsu company has an important role to play in, in the total system. We provide backup network, we do surveillance, mm, weather monitoring network, so on. Without Fujitsu, Shinkansen doesn't work, and we are proud of that. Uh, Back to nature. In Japan, have beautiful nature that also means uh, we have a lot of mountains and valleys and rivers, lakes and everywhere. That's very beautiful. But uh, uh, Japan's railways must have a lot of bridges and tunnels. 
That's why Japan has a very advanced construction technologies as well. For example, this huge tunneling machine. machine you can you can see a person here, so you can tell how large it is. It says your tunnel. It's made in Japan. Why? Because this particular machine we used to build it. Uh, channel tunnel between England and France. You see, Japanese engineers celebrating the opening of the tunnel with the British and French engineers. So Japan's technology didn't just inspire uh, Europe, but also helped them to have their good trains and infrastructure. Uh, next generation high-speed rail will be Mangway. Uh, it's running at 375 miles an hour. Will be commercial available in 2027. It's a long way to go, but uh, they only had technologies from 1960s. They didn't just have money to build it, but it cost 100 billion dollars from Tokyo to Osaka. But now, all clear, uh, <coughs> government approved the plan for private construction. I have an interesting video. Here. <laughs> this same is commercial, only a little shorter, but 600 feet long, <coughs> and it takes only 1.3 seconds. It's a scaly speech. Did you miss it? Yes. Okay. Another video here. Don't miss it. Stop texting for one point three seconds. It's from different land. I went there, the facility, to shoot the video just for you, not for my farm, okay? Scaly. So I'm summarizing this session. So Shinkansen is synonym of safety. And Shinkansen is a system. And Fujitsu and Japan have technologies and experiences to achieve it uh, for you. Uh, speaking now of systems, our society is a huge system, and Fujitsu calls it human centric intelligent society. I can wait because time to start. We have mapped a real lot of activities into seven different areas of social wealth services. I picked a few of them and explained from last year. Would you like to hear more about the club? Three people, but don't you like the club? In every other session, we'll be talking about the club. You're tired of the club? You're tired of Trump? You're tired of the Kardashians? You're not wrong, but um, well, you were you're right. You know, this industry is addictive to club, but I still have to talk about club. It's on the other. So many companies provide cloud services, but only a few provide cloud platforms when they are both important. Uh, Fujitsu, I want you to know that Fujitsu is one of the best cloud platform providers. And uh, our flagship computer, uh, cloud server, is called the Fujitsu M10. It starts from one socket up to 64 socket supercomputer in many ways. And the M10 provides a lot of unique features, interesting features uh, for you to use. I will explain them very quickly. And the largest configuration 64 socket have achieved a lot of uh, world records, so it's a monster. But not everybody needs a monster, so we, we let you tailor make your own system to match your, to, to achieve the best cost performance for your use. You can start from four cores, so it's okay. It has a decent performance, but you can add cores using core activation feature up to 64 cores. And uh, if you're lucky, your business success will be good for you. And you can add more computing power by adding boxes, boxes until 16. I don't know many users who really need data. So you have enough extendability and your business growth. By the way, what's your most important uh, ID asset? Is it software, hardware? No, they can be replaced. It's uh, your data. Because um, that's yours. So it makes perfect sense to have your own data in your own database or in your own database server. And the, the future seven ten is designed to, uh, specifically designed to provide the fastest access to the largest databases we, we support. Oracle database in memory with the largest geons in the market and the high throughput memory graphs. Number three is interesting. Uh, software and shift is the capability. Uh, we have frequently used the software routines, quantum processor chips. 
That means software runs as a hardware. It gives them uh, high speed to your uh, overall computer system. And depending on the region, but we support maximum 64 terabytes DRAM. So don't get confused. Many companies say they support larger memory, but that's often flash memory. DRAM is 100 times faster than flash. And um, we have a memory bus, double the size of the ZM bus. And wicked cooling is interesting. If you have a car, not electric, that must have wicked cooled engine. Because wicked cooling is simply more efficient and more advanced than air cooling. But in the computer industry, all the supercomputers have wicked cooling because it's more difficult, more expensive. But uh, we're a supercomputer company, so we introduce uh, wicked cooling into your commercial servers at affordable price. There's a lot of benefits, like we can place memories and processors closer to each other. Of course, it's faster. And our machine comes is cool. The high speed, cool design, aerodynamic design, and fast class is gorgeous. I have never tried with a fast class though. Uh, but computers are bored, hate to say, but just boxes sitting there forever. And you said the box is cool, so please come and see. We even built a demonstration model for you to see how data flow and uh, water flows are going there. Uh, but it's for demonstration only, okay? And uh, I personally call it the Main Street Electric Parade. <laughs> yeah. Again, don't open your computer. It's for demonstration only. You can't find flashing lights in your computer. You will simply break your computer, okay? It's a uh, stream benchmark. It's an industry standard benchmark that um, that says Fujitsu M10 is uh, double, nearly triple faster than uh, standard into a box. And uh, with the software chip capability, the M10 is 11 times faster than a traditional computer. <coughs> so if a standard box is uh, color, our Lexus, everything is Lexus. That's different. So you might be thinking that such high performance server is expensive. But um, I have a good news for you. We worked real hard, really, really hard. It hurts to, to match your price requirements. So your Lexus 500 is as affordable as Carola. We are using human-centric tools to design our computers. Uh, by using this 3D uh, design tool, we have been able to reduce uh, uh, the development costs in any country. It's all benefits you. And actually, I wanted to do my presentation all in 3D for the first time in old Dublin, but I couldn't uh, prepare the hundreds of uh, 3D glasses. It's at all for you. So, so please come and try it at our booth. You know, the M10 has spark hardware, but the hardware doesn't make a great system, just like a train by itself. It's not a great system. So, Fujis M10 runs Oracle, Solvice, Cloud Operating System, which is one of the most reliable operating systems, in, operating systems in the market, and definitely it's the most scalable operating system in my opinion. That's why it's the best fit for for our high-end servers and mission-critical users. I have uh, an old friend, Bill Neshine, who's the head of the Oracle Solicitor Group. Well, let's hear what he has to say. Uh, please welcome Bill Neshine. Thank you, thank you. It's very good to be here. So, uh, uh, I'm Bill Neshine, I lead the Solaris engineering team. And when I was here last year, I spoke to you briefly about um, what we had done with OpenStack in Solaris Lambda 2. And since then, we've been continuing to work with the OpenStack community. And we're going really fast on this technology, as, just as the community is going really fast, and we're just not slowing down. Earlier today, we released uh, Oracle Solaris 11.3. Uh, it's available for download on the web, general availability as of today. Uh, and we've added support for a number of new capabilities in OpenStack in the latest version of Solaris. 
We have ironic support for bare metal provisioning. We have uh, heat orchestration capability. And we have added support for the Murano application catalog. But as before, our focus on OpenStack and using OpenStack and Solaris is really to bring the enterprise capabilities of Solaris to uh, a scalable open cloud platform. Solaris has continued to focus on enterprise capabilities. And these enterprise foundation capabilities that have been built into Solaris for many, many years are particularly important when you're deploying an enterprise class cloud. For example, Solaris 11 allows you to define some compliance profiles. There's a built-in compliance reporting capability in Solaris 11 with two different profiles. One for PCI DSS, uh, if you have a, a retail operation carrying credit card data, and also we have a profile which is Oracle's recommended security practices built in. These can be easily customized, particularly with Solaris 11.3, for your particular application environment. We take full advantage of hardware encryption capabilities in the underlying system, such as available in the M10, so that you can secure both your block-based and your uh, object-based storage in your cloud completely transparently. It just works, uh, is configured that way out of the box on Solaris. Always available auditing in Solaris also gives you full visibility into any kind of changes which are happening in your system. And the OpenStack distribution in Solaris has been pre-configured to take advantage of best practices in Solaris for least privilege, use the SNF uh, framework within Solaris and all of the other capabilities of Solaris which make it a foundation enterprise platform. You can even lock down the virtual images that you deploy applications in, in OpenStack, as a read-only immutable image, so that even if hackers do somehow get in, they can't actually make any changes. <clears throat> Solaris delivers a uh, secure infrastructure by design, and this has been a key design principle of Solaris, and a di real differentiator of Solaris versus uh, commodity open other open technologies. Solaris is designed from the ground up as an enterprise computing platform. And you know, this, is, this is what you need for building an enterprise class cloud. <coughs> Solaris delivers minimized part and software configurations. Out of the box, the system is secure. Uh, zones and even, even your global zone can be locked down in a way that even the root user can't make changes to it. <coughs> All our packages that are delivered in Solaris are cryptographically signed and you can verify these at install time and verify them later as part of a compliance reporting operation. And I have, there's way more than I have time to discuss today, but there's plenty of opportunities here at Open World to learn more about uh, what we've done in Polaris. Another security foundation which is important for building a safe and secure enterprise computing infrastructure is a fine-grained access control capability that let you delegate limited administrative tasks to specific individuals. Because administrators are human. People do make mistakes. And we need to engineer into our mission critical systems the ability to minimize and mitigate the kinds of mistakes which just happen as part of everyday life. So for example, you can define a zones manager role with Solaris that has the capability of managing zones deployed within a global zone, not necessarily all zones, but even uh, narrowing it down to some specific zones assigned to a particular business unit within your operation. You can also associate objects with individual packages with Solaris. So for a simple operation, uh, say someone needs to update the message of the day file, uh, that's typically owned by root, and in a, a, a <coughs> typical Unix installation, you would have to uh, allow someone to have the global root privilege in order to update just the message of the day. With Solaris, you can assign that capability of updating that specific file to just a particular individual and even time limit that to a particular amount of time. Finally, authorizations, um, as I said, are time limited and remote auditing capability that we have in Solaris allows us to keep track of any changes that have been made on the system so that even if someone does break in and make some changes, they can't cover the tracks. The evidence of, of any hack has been there uh, and is exported to the system uh, can't be altered by the, uh, by the attacker. 
Solaris has capabilities built in to stop malware dead in its tracks. You can prevent attackers from establishing a foothold in the system so that even if they, they get into your system, they're unable to make any changes. They can't establish control. And this makes it really a whole lot easier to uh, prevent uh, malicious access and, and export of your data. Solaris immutable systems and virtual machine technology will also allow you to prevent administrative mistakes, as I referred to earlier. Because you can lock down any changes to the system outside of the normal, the, the normal operational path, such as patches, security patches are still allowed, but no other changes to the system can be uh, allowed uh, on the system. So there's lots of, of great security technologies which are made available in Solaris. All of these are available on the Fujitsu M10 systems as well. Um, I encourage you to check out some of the uh, other sessions on Solaris available at Open World. There's a QR code here you can snap with your smartphone and you get a whole list of, of all the different Solaris sessions that are available. And I'd like to thank Goro and the Fujitsu team for the great collaboration. Thank you. So thank you very much for that call. which is OpenStack. And I have a good example here, a uh, product that uses um, OpenStack interface, which is to build cloud service portal that helps you provide your own services to your customers. And uh, let's say you have a great software running, running on your private cloud. You want your customers to use it. Then you need auto management features such as you know, subscription, logging logout, uh, usage count, and doing management. But you don't have to worry about them for some uh, this package will take care of them as a management. So you can focus on your services, your customers. So many users are happy with it. Uh, if you are interested, please come and ask for more information. I have an interesting piece of news here. Spark is back and going again. <coughs> a few years back, I talked about um, the K computer uh, by Fujita and Rikin, supercomputer, uh, world fastest in graph benchmark. Graph benchmark is a uh, it's a simulation of a complex real world and parkour. Uh, it tracks nodes, edge nodes, and civilian trillions of it, so it's complex. And the K was number one until November last year. And then the IBM Sequoia became number one, which is not surprising. Sequoia is a good computer. But we're back to number one this year by doubling the performance. Double the performance. What changes do you think we made to the K computer? What do you think? It's memory? More processors, has been there. No, we didn't make any changes to hardware. It's just software. We changed the algorithm. So what I mean is, um, hardware matters, but software also matters. So, uh, it could have cost hundreds of millions of dollars to upgrade the hardware to achieve uh, the same performance gain. We could do it with software. Uh, and the Spark architecture computers have room to grow with better software. Uh, and Fujitsu Oracle are committed to uh, the Spark architecture computers and uh, so it's operating system we keep investing. It's not just me, these gentlemen are saying so. They are all awesome. You know what is it? And um, yeah. Amazon on the left is our, our chairman and Tanakhan is the president. <coughs> I keep asking them for more budget. It hasn't happened. It's a tough people. By the way, I, I explained the presentation to Yamosan, and he liked Elvis. And he told me, Oh, you should wear uh, Elvis outfit on the stage. <coughs> I said, No, son. Um, I'm not Elvis, not even close. And, uh, it's not a comedy show or something. It's not last night. Well, I would have done that for more budget. <laughs> I have one more interesting application running on M10. It's an uh, anomaly detection. It's a hot area, another hot area. Anomaly is an, an unexpected state of a system, any system, post post system, climate system, and then detecting and analyzing the, the anomaly is a very important to understand and control of the system. Uh, traditionally, the computers were dumb. I mean, the humans had to teach them what's anomaly, what's not, what's good, what's bad. But we don't want to keep doing that forever because the systems are getting more complex and larger. 
So this engine is self-live using build data. I will show you a very quick demonstration. Uh, seven now computer system, the, the Anomaly is running as a uh, background. It keeps monitoring the system that as soon as it detects an anomaly, it uh, analyzes it and tells you what it seems to be. Did you get it? Okay, it's a computer speed demonstration, sorry. Well, I only wanted to tell you that the M10 computer has enough capacity to run such a complex workload as a background. You know, it misfails a lot by everything Japan has because of its um, beauty, class, and quality. The M10 has a uh, quality that you love. But uh, Mr. Ellison is not the only fan of M10. Uh, the enterprise architects like my next guest, my uh, next guest to have, uh, <coughs> we don't have the value M10 provides to any mission political businesses. Please welcome Eric Benner. everyone for being here. I do want to pick the big music here. Uh, my name is Eric Benner. I'm an enterprise architect with Mythics. Mythics is an Oracle Platinum partner. Um, we have a pretty large customer base in the Spark world, and we do everything Oracle. What I'm really here to talk about is why hardware matters in your environment. And it does matter. Commodity systems do not solve your business challenges. You need to pick a system that has the right security. And what you'll find is not only does the software, Solaris, have security built into it, but also the hardware itself has the ability to accelerate your systems in a secure environment. And you have to have a system that scales, that has performance. It doesn't do, good, it doesn't do well for you to have a small system that doesn't scale to the size that your business needs. We're going to give an example here of how that works in your environment. So in modern environments, we have our current data centers. And our reports are running fast. But the question is, are they secure? Is your data encrypted? The first thing that you're going to do is encrypt the systems. Immediately what you'll find on a commodity system is you have a performance issue. The systems now run slower. As I'm sure most folks have already done this already. So you have a much slower system now that you've encrypted the system. This is, happens because on commodity hardware, your servers consume normal CPU cycles in order to handle the encryption. It means your mainline CPU is affecting the performance of the system to handle the security. It slows down your workload. It slows your application down. It slows the database down. How do you normally solve the problem? You put more hardware in the system. That means you're now consuming more software licenses. It's now more expensive in your environment. This is not what you want in IT now. So the common thing is you throw a bigger system in, you need the reports faster, you get a bigger server. But that's not the fix. More CPU is not the fix to your problem. A better architecture is the actual fix to your performance problem. You want systems that have hardware acceleration, like software on chip, software in silicone, that actually accelerate at the silicone layer your performance problems. You want systems that have self-healing technologies, where the operating system sees a fault of a critical process and will automatically restart the process. It gives you the high availability you need in your enterprise. You want the security reporting that Bill talked about. You want an operating system that will tell you if it's not secure. You want an operating system that gives you better security in the environment. No single privileged user to hack in the environment. You want a system that's easier to patch. A lot of you that might already run Solaris now know that in older versions of Solaris, it can be difficult to patch. In the newer version of Solaris 11, anyone in this audience can patch a server. More importantly, anyone in this audience can revert a patch. The system automatically makes a backup of the operating system and allows you to quickly and easily fall back to the system state prior to patching. And we're also talking cloud, which involves large-scale server consolidation. You want an architecture that can scale from a single server to a large number of servers, to go from two cores all the way up to over a thousand cores. You need that agility in your business. 
And when you do this, you also want to consume less software licenses. You need to manage how you do that. Something unique to this technology is it allows you to size your software license to your application. It gives you dynamic, scalable licensing to your Oracle application, which helps you on your expense. So what we'll do is come in and put in a Fujitsu system as an example. Immediately, it runs faster. Even with encryption turned on, the system performs faster. Your reports run faster. Your OLTP workload runs faster. You can also do large-scale consolidation, taking rows of computers and consolidating them into a single server. And you also have lower operational costs because the automation built into Solaris with tools like OpenStack, tools like Puppet, you're able to reduce your operational costs from the data center. You're able to reduce your power, your cooling, even your Oracle licensing. Right? It produces a system that's less expensive to run. Some real world numbers because everyone cares about that. So this was a tool used called Swingbench, which all your DBAs are probably familiar with. This was on a commodity system taking the same workload, running encrypted traffic against a database. And what you'll see is we maxed out at about 56,000 transactions per minute. A respectable number. But this was with encryption turned on. Taking the same number of cores on a system with hardware acceleration, we had over 100,000 transactions per minute against the same storage array with the same number of CPUs the same amount of memory. The real difference was the architecture of the operating system and the architecture of the hardware. That's over a 2x performance improvement when you encrypt the data. Hardware matters in your business. If you want more information, I understand we're running close on time. Please feel free to stop by the Mythics booth at 401. You can stop by and talk to one of the experts like myself. Look at running workloads, talk about patching, and learn about how these technologies can hand, help your business. So I'd like to say uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Eric. Great job. This year is special for Fujitsu because it's our 80th anniversary. Eight years ago, and now. Same place, I told Sexy, and only I didn't exist. Uh, so I told you that I think I started this project 50 years ago, but uh, actually they started the project in 1930 when they, run, they were running out of the, uh, the capacity of the existing rail network system. So the real history stretches back almost 80 years. So we are the same age. Told somebody looks like or was born in the same age as Samir as Fujitsu. After this, uh, the Orient, my favorite. Did you know that Madonna and Michael Jackson born in the same year? Did you know that? The same, same month, August. Uh, I'm concluding the session. You know, we jump up cheaper deals. But when we are talking about important things like your life, or your family's life, or somebody's life, or your day, somebody's data, you are smart people to choose to be here. So you should know that safety right with quality. They have a high priority than pricing. And uh, they can't be achieved overnight home or wasn't built in a day. Uh, it takes more than an idea of innovation. It takes time, um, experience, uh, patience, perseverance, passion. And Fujitsu and Japan have them for you. And I always have queries in my session. I will give an answer to the quiz I asked last year when and where was the taken. The answer is number four. New York. The samurais made a long trip to New York to say hi. Yeah, to show respect to America. And they received a warm welcome, good old days. And the people think that some of it's uh, uh, old fashioned, but not always true. They love the innovation that we see sometimes. Um, their primary weapon was uh, the gun, not some like so, since the 16th century. <coughs> And uh, as soon as some railroad was over, they imported um, steam motors from England to start the railway. It eventually led to Shinkansen and uh, Mangalore train. Now, come in, come in, please. It's a rough time, almost, almost. This is a twist. 
may be easy if you are not sleeping or texting throughout the session. Uh, it's a wrap of time. So, so don't leave yet, it's a wrap up, but um, it's, it's the end of my session. Thank you very much for your time. And you have a long day. Ken, Bill, and Aki, okay. So I'm waiting for a fourth prize. First, fourth, second, second, third. Okay. It's a hundred dollar gift card. Cash. And really, for. Okay. Four six two seven zero five six. Zero five six. Make a noise. <laughs> I can't feel. No, go on. Really? Go in once. Do you see somebody raising their hand? No? Okay. So go on. Uh, four, two, uh, four, six, two, six, one, five, two. One, five, two. Okay, come in. Thank you. Thank you very much.